Hi there, and a very warm welcome to this week's quick tip. This week is an addition to last time's random texture quick tip, where we used the Octane's random texture to offset textures per object. This week, we will continue in that we explore the possibility to create random values, even though you might not have clones and therefore the possibility to use the random texture node. I'm very sorry that I couldn't upload the last couple of weeks. I had COVID and was lying in bed, but a positive, I'm feeling way better now and therefore there's nothing in the way of more quick tips. So let's get started right away. So this will be our scene for today and what we are going to do is to create some variation in colors within those leaves. And we are using different um, presets for the leaves. One time we are using a cloner with render instances. One time we are using mesh leaves. And one time we are using the leaves all baked into one mesh. And with all of those, we want to get some random values out of there. And we will see how to get there during this tutorial. With the risk of making this tutorial a little bit longer than it has to be, let's recreate the material from scratch. So what we need is a universal material. So we go up to our material create list here and create a universal material. Here we go. What I want to do is to copy those textures that came with the leaf, so we don't have to relink them later. Okay, so let's go over to our new universal material, apply it to all the leaves. So best way to do that is to override the old material while holding Alt and dragging them on to the old material. Here we go and then paste in the textures that we just copied. Here we go. Now the easiest way to do this is to just use the diffuse and plug into the albedo and then use the normal map and plug it into the normal to get some more detail on the surface. So this is all great and good, but this is not a very realistic leaf material because those leaves would have had some transmission, meaning they are translucent. So the least thing we could do is to take the same map and also load it into the transmission. Now with the universal material, let's go to the transmission tab and look at what the transmission type is. And you have to make sure this is set to diffuse. Otherwise, you would get very strange refractions in your leaves that you probably don't want. My technique to control this a little bit more is to bring in a color correction to both of those streams to control them independently. So let's do this real quick. Color correct this and color correct this. So usually what I do is go to the upper path that goes into the albedo and uh, bring the brightness down a little bit. So more energy is there for the transmission. So let's make this 0.5, for example. And in the transmission uh, material, let's set the gamma to 0.4545. Now uh, let's make it solo so you can see it will get brighter this way. And therefore, there's even more energy for the transmission. And now we are getting a nice translucent leaf material. Last bit for the base material here would be to also bring in an octane gradient and pipe that texture through there to the roughness. Because we somewhat want to control the roughness, Let's go into solo on that. So basically that's okay. Uh, so we want the um, veins here to be a little bit rougher. That means they should look a little bit lighter, which they do. Maybe this is a little bit too much roughness. So let's unsolo this. And then go into the gradient and pick the white knot here and set it to 50%. 
And that would be our base material done. Now let's care about the randomization here. Like last time in the random texture offset tutorial, we are going to do this with an OSL script and a random color from Octane. Also, as last time, you can go to my page, silverwing-vfx.de, uh, navigate to the free stuff, click on the OSL, that will bring you to the OSL repository, which is a Google Drive link. And then there, go to the U-Shifter OSL, either the SIP or the OSL itself, and download that. Open the OSL file with any normal text editor, copy out the text here, and go back to Cinema 4D and our shader view. Now in the shader view, in comparison to last time, this isn't a projection, but a usual color OSL. So what we could do is scroll down to the OSL scripts, bring in an OSL texture, and then just delete out the old code and paste in the code that we just copied, and then hit compile. And usually that should give us a compilation okay, but right now it's giving us a compilation failed. So I'm not quite sure what's happening, so let's do this once more. Copy that shader, go over to Cinema 4D, make sure all the code is completely gone here, paste in the new code and compile. I don't know what just happened, but it's a good thing I'm leaving this in there because not every time that might work. And maybe this is giving you an incentive to uh, try harder if stuff's not working. So yeah, leaving that in there definitely. So what we have now here is again an OSL script that can take in some random values. Uh, let's make this a little bit more visible in that I show all and make this maybe a little bit broader. So all the text is populated here correctly. The texture input is for the main texture here, while the variation ports are for the random texture to be populated. Let's get this into the main diffuse as well as the transmission as we want to keep them the same color. Now there's something with the script where the script is losing the information for the saturation, so we need to fill that in and have the saturation filled in as one. That means we don't lose or we don't change any of the saturation values and it is the same as the input. So since we have the cloner here active and the cloner is producing render instances, we can now use the exact same random color to drive our U and saturation offsets. So nothing is happening right now, but if I go and solo the random color, you can see that all the clones have assigned a random value between black and white. And this can be used to now offset the U, for example. So uh, be a little bit careful with that. If you go from minus one to plus one, you get some very funky looking leaves here. This can be a motion graphics piece, but uh, for realistic values, this might be a bit too much. So maybe let's go from minus 0.1 to zero. And you can see that now we have some variation in our leaves. And if you are not satisfied with the random distribution here, you can change the seed and therefore change the distribution of where, where the shift is occurring. You can make this, of course, stronger to your liking, if you want. So now, this is all fine and good, but what happens if we have those same leaves sort of uh, baked as a mesh? So if I turn off the cloner here, and have the same leaves, but every of those leaves is a single mesh. So when we go to our 
random color and solo that because the mesh here is not a cloner anymore and therefore those are not clones anymore but usual meshes. The random color can't work its magic on those anymore so they are not randomized. So what to do? One way to deal with that would be to give all of those leaves inside of a octane fracture object. So let's do this real quick. Let's go and create a fracture object under MoGraph fracture and then put all the leaves inside of there. Then make sure you set the mode to explode segments and then you could use a random. So let's go to the MoGraph effectors and then random and put this here to make it visible that they are connected. Now we don't want to randomize the position as the random effector is doing on default. We want to randomize the color. So we are going to get this a effector color. And you can see in the preview that now every leaf gets a random color here. The random color, despite the same name here, is not doing anything. So we have to somehow get this random color inside of the shader. And actually there is a MoGraph color down here. Let me scroll down. So down here, if you look closely, there is a MoGraph color shader that we can use to bring in the color. So if we put that inside of the U variation and the saturation variation and go and set this to solo, you can see the color from our MoGraph setup is now being displayed inside of our shader. And therefore the OSL script can utilize our colors to randomize and offset the textures. You might not be able to see this very well right now. So maybe let's go with the funky colors again. So you can see now we are offsetting our shaders by this color here. And obviously I'm just making a little bit less strong of an effect here. Maybe 0.2 and plus 0.2. So you can see the green color is shifted to left and right to be the neighboring color here. There is even another workflow you can use to get a sort of random color per object and this would be then used by the object color. So every one of those object has this color port here where you can user define a color for every of those objects. You can go in every of those objects and choose a random color to set, but obviously this is a lot of work. So Fortunately, there is a plugin for that. So if you go to the website Safrina 3 d so safrina 3 dblogpostcom and under plugins, there is this random color plugin here that assigns a random color to your selected objects. And when you download this and install it into your Cinema 4D's plugin folder, let me just undo what I did with the fracture object here and the shader there, random here. So if we then select all the objects and then go to the extensions, random color, assign random color, all of those objects now without the use of MoGraph have their own random color assigned to them via the color port here. There might be an easier way to do this. I have found only a bit of a cumbersome way to bring this color inside of Octane because now the MoGraph color doesn't work anymore because this is not associated with MoGraph anymore. So if we solo that color, that MoGraph random color here, there are having the same color again and not realizing that those objects here have their own distinct colors. So what can we do? 
Again, there might be an easier way. This is the way I found. So if you select all of the objects and right click, then go to extensions, octane, and then create an octane object tag on all of those and go to the object layer to object color and tick use display color. This then will use the display color inside of the object color of Octane. Now what we could do now is um, search for another little OSL script. So if I hit tab and search color, you can see there is an OSL script that uses the object display color and brings it into the shader graph. And let's connect this real quick and then get this as a solo. And you can see now, I don't know what's going on here, but let's reload. Now you can see that our random colors here from our objects are now brought in to our shader. And we can use that as before. As I said, with the OSL texture here to randomize the hue and the saturation or with the random texture offset to offset the textures as per our last tutorial. All right, so let's go over our last situation here. And uh, this situation is when all the leaves are baked into one mesh. I had those situations, for example, with grasses or with trees where all the leaves of a tree was baked into one mesh. But we have an advantage here. So we can differentiate between those meshes because they are not connected. And this is where Safrina comes to our rescue a second time. So there's actually a script here. So if we go to home, and search for random vertex color. And this is exactly what we need. So you can download this script here and then go and install it in the scripts folder of Cinema 4D. And then select the mesh where we have uh, different meshes that are not connected. Then go to our extensions again, user scripts, scripts, and then go here and choose random vertex color. All right, Cinema right now took a very long time to think about that and I thought it crashed. This is why the layout looks a little bit different right now. Um, so I noticed with the meshes here that the leaves, there's some problems with the script and it takes a very long time to think about, at least in 2023.1. So I think it's actually faster in older versions of Cinema 4D. If you download the script, at least before you run it, save your scene in case that crashes Cinema 4D or takes forever. So in the end, if it works, you will get a random color with a vertex color node here. And if you've seen my former tutorials, you already know what node to use. And this is the attribute node. So let's go and Pairing in an attribute, we don't need the preview here. And with the attribute, we want to match the name to that tag here. So vertex color, copy that and paste it in here. There's no need to set it to float since we are having a vertex color and no vertex weight. And if we then connect this to our saturation and hue, you can see the effect is taking place and we are getting random U values. Let's make this a little bit stronger so you can see in our leaves. So this is the thing you need to do in the third situation where you have a connected mesh. What we learned today is how we go about to create random values and bring them into the shader to have some variation in our shader whether it is the offset of textures as per our last tutorial or in this tutorial, the offset of colors of U. Of course, the sky is the limit and you can find out a lot more use cases with random effects in your shader. 
I just wanted to go over how to utilize them in different use cases with different meshes so you have a chance to randomize stuff inside of Octane. And this concludes my tutorial for today. It's gotten a little bit longer than I anticipated, but that's okay. I hope you liked it. And I say until next time and happy randomizing.